Here's a vertical spring with a spring constant 600 newtons per meter. A 0.05 kilogram ball is pushed into the spring compressing the spring by 0.1 meter and then released from rest. This is like a spring gun. After release, the ball gets shot upward and we want to find the speed of the ball the moment the spring becomes relaxed again and the maximum height reached by the ball as measured from the starting lowest position. In this problem, there is no mention of air resistance, friction, or heat produced, so we're not going to consider any of those. This means that no mechanical energy will be lost to heat. The total mechanical energy will be a constant. Or we can use the work energy theorem, which says the work done by non-conservative forces equals to the change in total mechanical energy. In this case, after the ball is released, there are only springs force and gravity acting on it, and both of those forces are conservative. So if we ignore air resistance and friction, there is no work done by the non-conservative forces. Delta E is zero, E is a constant. So the total mechanical energy is the same at the beginning, at this stage, and uh, at the maximum height. I can call this initial, final one, final two, or I can just call these stages uh, one, two, three. The total mechanical energy includes kinetic energy and uh, potential energy. Kinetic energy is uh, one half mv squared, and we've learned about two different kinds of potential energies. One is the gravitational potential energy, mgy, and the potential energy stored in a spring one half kx squared. If a mass is moving, we have kinetic energy. If a mass is uh, above ground or below ground, if it's not on the ground, we have mgy. If there's a spring and the spring is either stretched or compressed, we have energy stored in the spring. So let's see. Initially, the ball is not moving, no kinetic energy. Whether the ball has mgy or not will depend on our ground choice, the reference point ground. This is uh, the lowest point in this problem, so it can be convenient for us to use this position as the reference point ground. So I'm going to use that as ground, so initially the ball is on the ground, there is no mgy. There is a spring, and the spring now is compressed. So there is energy stored in the spring, so there is 1 half kx squared. At this stage, the ball is moving. We don't know how fast, but uh, we're looking for that speed. So we have 1 half mv squared. The ball is no longer on the ground. It is now above ground, so there is mgy. The spring is still there, but uh, now the spring is relaxed. The spring is neither stretched nor compressed, so there is no energy stored in the spring. So that's it for this stage. And let's see, at the maximum height, it's a turning point. So the speed of the ball is zero. There is no kinetic energy. It is up high, so there is mgy. Again. The spring is still relaxed, no one half kx squared. So that's what we have. Now, of course, this y and that y, they are not the same. So you may wish to write down 2 and 3 like this to tell them apart. Now, of course, if you want, you can also label this as 2. OK, so let's see. Let's plug in the numbers. Initially, this k is 600. The compression is 0.1. So if you do this calculation, you'll get 3, and that equals to 1 half the mass m is 0.05. Now I know I have to plug in the mass, because not every term has m, so we cannot cancel the mass, because this term here, 1 half kx squared, does not have mass. So now I need to plug in the mass. The speed we don't know. 
the mass 0.05 g. If I use 10 for g, the y, what is the height above ground? The spring used to be compressed by 0.1. Now it's uh, back to a relaxed spring. So it is uh, up by 0.1 meter. So the y is uh, 0.1. And uh, here for the third stage, the mass is again 0.05. I use 10 for g, and we don't know the height. So I can set these two to be the same, 3 equals to that, and then solve for v2. And we'll find v2 to be square root of 118, which is uh, about 11 meters per second. And then I can set 3 to equal to that. Of course, you can also set this, these two to equal each other, but 3 equals to that is easier. And so the y3 will be 6 meters. In an ideal case, if the system does not lose any mechanical energy, that means uh, this thing can go on and on. So after it gets to the maximum height, the ball can fall back down, compressing the spring, and then to a maximum compression, and then the ball bounces back again which means uh, the problem can start with the ball up high and then you can release the ball from this height and then the ball is going to strike and, and compress the spring down to a maximum compression and then bounce back up. In that case, uh, the total mechanical energy will be the same also at every stage. This will be the same as our original problem. It's just like a backwards replay initial, middle, and the final stages, all with the same amount of total mechanical energy. In that ideal case, this event can go on and on forever. The ball goes down and bounces up, down and up. But in reality, more or less, there is air resistance and the friction, which means that there is heat produced. So eventually, the ball is going to come to rest. Not only we have normal air resistance and friction, but also we have this thing called internal friction. If I have a spring, if I just stretch, release, stretch, release like this, or this spring, compress, release, or a rubber band. If I do this, what happens is that the atoms in here, or the molecules in this, they rub against each other. The molecules rub against each other. So we get this internal friction taking energy away and heats the material up. So we can lose energy even if you just have a spring that's getting compressed and released, compressed, released. So in this case, even if there is no air resistance, you can do it in the vacuum. The system will still lose energy eventually to heat.